don't know about you guys, but when I first read Tower of God, I thought of the workshop as this mysterious organization that is doing a lot of crazy experiments and they're making all these items and weapons, but I didn't really think of them as much more than that. Just some group that exists on the 30th floor, you know, they have some influence in the tower and they're talked about every now and then. I couldn't be farther from the truth. The more research I do into the workshop, the more I realize the workshop isn't even really a workshop. It's a massive organization that spans the entire tower and more. Comparable to Jihad's army. You've got Jihad's army over here. You got Fug doing their religious zealot stuff and even Wahike Song, which is, you know, the club that is trying to get out of the tower, right? A bunch of friends hanging out. And then above them all, above them all, you have the workshop. And I'm not even exaggerating. The workshop was founded by McSeth, who is known as the Great father of the workshop and this guy is the reason why we have pockets and so much in the tower he really is like the founder of the workshop however he's the founder of the workshop that exists in the tower which means and this is confirmed the workshop also exists outside the tower think about that this is a workshop that is so powerful and influential that it exists even outside the tower. You cannot say that about anything else that is even remotely structured within the tower. You can't say that about Walhike Song. You can't say that about Jihad even. You know, they came from the outside, a lot of them did, but this organization ex has existed for thousands and tens of thousands of years, even before Jihad and them entered the tower. Jihad and everybody entered the tower and they found the workshop chilling. McSeth greeted the 10 warriors and even was essential to helping them climb. Okay, now you're starting to understand why this workshop is a big deal. And again, it's not just some headquarters on the 30th floor, that is one of their headquarters, but they are stationed on every single floor. On every single floor, there is a workshop. The workshop is present at least, and they have headquarters scattered throughout the tower and multiple workshop battles where they hand out items and stuff. They're responsible for creating items like pockets, like I said, pockets were specifically invented by McSeth, which is why, and this shows you how crazy McSeth is, the language of the tower is McSethian. This guy is such a big deal that everybody speaks the language that he invented. Now, okay, you may say, well, that's that's interesting and stuff. There's a lot going on there. Okay, but, but, but who cares, right? Like, what's the workshop doing? They're just making some stuff, and, you know, we, we know that they made the living ignition weapons, and, and that's a little fishy. You guys have no idea. To even come close to understanding like what the workshop is, we have to understand their goal. The reason why they were founded, etc., etc. Well, the crazy thing is, the workshop themselves don't even know why they were founded. One of their goals is to find out why they exist, and even further, this is their ultimate goal, to find out why existence exists. Yeah, this is why Jihad doesn't really mess with the workshop and nobody really tries to mess with them because A, obviously they're very influential and powerful, but also what they're doing transcends any politics or petty squabbles that are happening in the tower. They're doing something godlike. The workshop is trying to become God. They're trying to find out how creation came to be, but that's not, they're not trying to find that out just, you know, just because. They're trying to find that out so that they themselves can do the same thing. They wanna find out really what God or whatever was behind this so that they themselves can become that God. Like what? Jihad's like, oh, I'm king of the tower, you know? And they're like, F fine, we're trying to create our own universe. <laughs> we're trying to create life. And the crazy thing is, they've succeeded. McSeth, the great father of the workshop, has created life. I'm not making this up. One of the three lords of the tower, which if you don't know who the three lords are, highly recommend checking out this lore video. It was my first, so it's not as good as some of the others. I've kind of started to get the hang of, of, of the format, but it's a really interesting topic and I, I do recommend checking it out because the three lords are, you know, basically the ones who take turns ruling for Jaha. They rule over the tower. And one of the three lords is Flux, a very mysterious individual, sort of an enigma, right? And Flux was created created by McSeth. He is an artificial life form created by McSeth. He's not a robot. 
He is straight up some living being that was created by McSeth. And he is so smart and powerful and influential that he is one of the three lords. Not only that, but McSeth also has four other children who were also artificially created by him. Max, my Mod, and May, which, okay, McSeth is terrible at names, but those are his kids, they were all created by him. And those four went on to become great teachers of the workshop, so they hold a lot of influence. This makes McSeth the only person in the entire tower that has been 100% confirmed to have created life. There's rumors about Enryu, but even if Enryu can create life, which he probably can, he's freaking Enryu, McSeth is the only individual who's not an irregular that was able to create life. He wasn't able to create life through maybe Shinsu or some magical means per se, he did it through science. That is really scary, but kind of awesome. Also, did I mention McSeth is a weapons master? You know, we know about Ashul Edwaru, who also works for the workshop, so that says something. He's the guy who took one of Jihad's keys, who Jihad gave it to him, and he created the 13 months. That guy also works for the workshop. We'll talk more about that in a second. But McSeth also creates weapons, and in fact, he created the white Ore. Now, if you don't know what the white ore is, I suggest you watch my video on Arie Han. You can check that out by clicking the card. But basically, the white ore is Arie Han's sword, and it is the strongest weapon in the entire tower. Confirmed! It is the only S plus rank weapon. If you don't know, all weapons are ranked, you know, like from D onward, maybe even lower than that. And a lot of the 13 months are somewhere between B and like S minus. The Golden November is the strongest of the 13 months, and I believe that's an S rank. I'll confirm that. Yes, it is an S rank weapon. And not even that, not even the strongest of the 13 months is as strong as this White Ore. The White Ore is an S plus rank weapon. The only S plus rank weapon in the entire tower. And it was created by McSeth, the great father of the workshop, specifically crafted for Arie Han, and the crazy thing is, McSeth stopped making weapons after he made this thing. He was basically like, I'm never, I'm never gonna make something that amazing, I'm done. Which also brings us to Ashul Edwaru, who is the person who is responsible for pretty much all of the weapons that we see in the tower. Not only the 13 months, but pretty much everything. Needles and reels and hooks and everything, because those are the weapons that were brought in by Jihad and the Great warriors, and he modeled these tower weapons off of the weapons that they brought in. He actually even wrote a book about it called Of the Tower's Weapons, apparently, which is kind of sick. You know, SIU, I'll take that book. But basically, he had to redesign these weapons because they were created outside the tower for the purposes of being used in air, right? Swords being slashed through air and whatever other weapons. You can theorize and speculate, but he had to change it because the tower has Shinsu. If you don't know, it's hard to use some of these weapons in Shinsu, so they had to be remodified. Like, needles in particular are much better, because they're like thin, you know, but swords are much heavier and harder and blah blah blah. That's why most people in the tower don't use swords, you know, it's mostly specific special people, like people from the REA family. Except for Hots, because Hots is, you know, a freaking badass and always breaks the rules. But dude, this workshop, it, it's insane if you don't know how much influence they have, it, it's actually crazy. You know, there's been cases of a test admin, like, doing something disrespectful to the workshop or saying something disrespectful, and like, a great teacher having to come in and teach him a lesson, not, not physically, although a lot of them, I'm sure, are physically very strong, but they hold so much influence that when, one of these times that that happened, the test admin, like, goofed up and, and, and embarrassed himself, right? The ruler of the floor himself had to come and apologize to the great teacher who had to like scold this guy, you know? The ruler had to be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so, because of how much influence these guys have. Like, dude, they also work with the Pope Dao family, particularly Gustang. You know, we can see Gustang during the workshop battle talking to somebody who could be McSeth or maybe one of the great teachers, somebody influential, right? I like to think it's McSeth, but who knows who it actually is. And that says something in and of itself. You know, we know that Gustang, you can also check out my video on Gustang by clicking the card. He's somebody who wants to find out why guides exist, how the guide powers work. He wants to find out how to leave the tower, not so he can leave, but it just is something that, you know, interests him. And so I'm sure he's always studying with the workshop and, and doing stuff. He's created a lot of inventions as well. So that's pretty interesting. But dude, even just talking about like the creations of the workshop, like there's a giant list here on the wiki I recommend, but just to name off some of them, the 13 months, obviously, 
pretty nuts in and of itself. The Archimedes, the giant ship on the workshop battle floor, the 30th floor during the workshop battle. I mean, that thing was nuts, you know, absolutely massive and very impressive. And that's only like one of five uh, very famous floating ships created by the workshop. Um, the items like the Blood Tamara and the White Heavenly Mirror and the Bong Bong, which, while useful, I mean, I don't know how useful they'd be for rankers, they'd probably be pretty useful, um, so that says something, but even like, you're a suitcase and stuff like that, and the ignition weapons that we see throughout the story, and get this, the Hell Train! The Workshop created the Hell Train, which is interesting because we know the Workshop was there before Jihad entered. And we know that Jihad and everybody had to take the Hell Train while doing their tests. So it is very interesting that this system was almost already established. And we know at this time that the administrators were the ones running this system. Once again, video on administrators here. Gosh, I'm not even meaning to. It's just, we've covered so much lore that it all connects. Like, isn't that so cool? Yeah, like lighthouses, pockets, even the segregation drug that Yurik uses to separate the Red Thrissa from Hell Joe. You know, like, I mean, the workshop is just doing everything. The workshop isn't just this group that's doing some scientist stuff and, you know, they're making stuff. Like, these guys are trying to become God, and I'm not exaggerating. And I'm not talking about, like, King of the Tower God. I'm talking about a god who can create life and who can rule over a universe. That's pretty, some pretty wild stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much what we know about the workshop. You can find out more about like rankings within the workshop by going to the wiki or seeing SIU's blog posts. But um, there's definitely some more interesting information out there, but that was, that was the main stuff. I mean, the majority of the information. And I gotta say, the workshop is so much crazier than I ever could have imagined. Even doing research for this video, I kept surprising myself. Like, dude, there's so much going on here. And I really wonder like, how they are going to affect the story going forward. Like, are they pretty much out of the story? Is there gonna be another workshop that we go through sometime in the future? Or are some of these people that I talked about going to show up, like McSeth or Flux, you know? I mean, dude, the language that they're speaking is McSethian. Like, Evan, when Evan and Yuri gave Bomb that pocket, they're like, oh yeah, we're speaking McSethian. This pocket translates all languages to McSethian. Like, it's just nuts. So overall, I'm excited. The workshop is pretty interesting. So I thought I'd make a video on it. I can't believe I haven't already. And yeah, the workshop. Watch out for these guys, because they are crazy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave a like and subscribe, because we're making tons more Tower of God content going forward. And especially with Tower of God returning in just a few weeks, weeks. That is so insane. I'm excited. So there's going to be reactions and reviews and, you know, lore and theory on the new chapters once it releases. Also, patrons, you guys are amazing. A lot of you recently joined and I have to just thank you so much for all your support. You guys are awesome. I could not do what I do without you. And a lot of you suggest my video ideas and we get to talk in the in the chat and, you know, go back and forth about certain things. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God lore video. Take care.